The following program is available in high definition on channel 700. This program is designed and produced by the community with the support of TV Kojiko. Hello and welcome to Oakville Matters. This is the local television show on Kojiko Cable 23 and I gather other channels as well if you want high definition where you see what the community thinks matters in Oakville. And today we're in Brawny talking about the future of Brawny in the context of the review of our official plan which is underway now. And in the, uh, in the uh, aid of that discussion, we have with us today Ann Sargent, who's the Executive Director of the Brawny uh, Business Improvement Association, and we have Doug Greco, who is a noted restaurateur and entrepreneur, I'm going to call you Doug, uh, in the Brawny area, and we have Shelley Thornborough, who is one of the leaders of the Brawny Village Residents Association. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today to, to discuss this. Um, it's as a mayor, it's always uh, interesting to me to try to understand where the, uh, where the center of gravity is in any part of our town. And in Brawny, the history has, has uh, included periods where nobody wanted anything to change ever and didn't want anything to be built. I've, I've had letters from people who live in 20-story high-rises uh, demanding that there be no more uh, high-rises, and I'm never sure how to interpret that. It's a little bit like I'm in, close the hole, pull up the ladder, I don't know. Um, I also get a lot of communication from folks that there's not enough um, activity going on in the Brawny Village downtown. Uh, they want the mall to be more, uh, they want the mall to be full, they want the mall to look good. If you think back over the last 20 years, hasn't the appearance of Brawny Village really come up? Uh, I, I think it has. 100%. Definitely. And uh, Shelley, you were attracted to the Brawny area of Oakville, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't look really ugly, or you might not have gone there, right? Absolutely. So, so Anne, where is the center of gravity in the in the uh, what you hear from your business members? On, uh, on what o what Oakville should do around growth in Brawny. Should there be any? Where should it be if there should be any? Uh, yes, and thank you for having us here today, Mayor Burton. Um, the concern is uh, the community needs more height and more density, which I know you've heard heard that before. Uh, we, we have low buildings right now. It doesn't make sense for a developer to come in and do a building unless it's a minimum of eight stories because the return on investment doesn't make sense when you have to put underground parking in. So you're quite right off the top where there is great frustration about the mall because that the mall is our main street, major block, and it's the, ca it, it, it's the catalyst. It's poised to be the catalyst for change for the whole, whole of Bronte. And we have business owners, and maybe Doug will agree or disagree, but we have business owners who currently would not invest, likely invest in a facade program because they're playing a game of wait and see. Uh, why should I invest in my building or do new retrofitting or, or upgrade uh, uh, until the whole of Bronte looks like it's going to go? And I'd, I'd have to say that there's a great amount of uh, anxiety and frustration about the time that it's taking. Having said that, the, the Bronte is the, uh, the, the jewel is an overworked word, but we're so blessed to have such a naturally scenic environment. That beautiful park that the part that the town has done, the improvements on the boardwalk, uh, the the new buildings that have come in, and just the general um, gentrification that's going on, and high quality uh, businesses and services. So, th it's the, the mall seems to be the lightning rod for a feeling of paralysis. Let's say. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel. So, so Shelley. As a resident and a mom who's going to have to shop somewhere, uh, what's your take on shopping in, in the village? Do you, are you attracted there? Do you avoid it? Uh, where do you go? 
Well, I go to different sources, but I am attracted because there are some unique shops that we have, and I like to shop local. I've always gone to Heaney's, which is a local barber, and I've taken my boys there religiously for their haircuts. And I believe in supporting the people who are invested in the community that we've chosen to live in. Unlike um, Annie, in a way, our board has looked at this in a different view since uh, May when we came on board as a new executive uh, from the Bronte Village Residents Association. And there has always been, a, you would agree, to some extent, a level of apathy, but I think now we're starting to see a change. People are coming to us, and we're really thankful, Anne, for a lot of the uh, support because we've been able to have face-to-face -face communication in the community, Canada Day, and other events that we've taken on together to engage conversations, be able to have face-to-face -face conversations with our community and find out what are the issues, what are the concerns and ideas. And they are encouraged as a residents association. We're taking on a very engaged approach, but that we're, um, we're reaching out to them and we're, we're, we're trying to broaden this conversation. And as opposed to sort of taking a, a, a seat back, look at it in terms of a shared approach, um, no more of the armchair critic, but how can we help? And we became part of a working group with the two town councils that we have in uh, Ward 1, um, Council Sean O'Meara and Council Ralph Robinson, and the Bronte BIA. It's a sort of working group to look at issues at the mall, get the facts as it as it stands from the actual property owners and a lot of the business owners, as well as the community to see, you know, where where can we find that common ground? We know there's no silver bullet, but certainly when we come together and share ideas and have a conversation, maybe we can start building a unified vision and do something a little different that starts to take on a more positive approach because it is going to take all hands on deck to get some change, some positive change going, and we realize that. Yeah. So five years ago, we looked at the future of Brawny and the Brawny section of the Livable Oakville official plan um, is the encapsulation of what the different views came to. That's like, I guess, everything in politics. That was the compromise vision. So now we're looking at it again. Uh, Doug, you're unique as a businessman because you know how we, one of the starts of this conversation is the mall and, and what's been happening with right. it. And when I met you, that's where you were. You, you, I mean, you're, the, still you're the fire hall, you're still there. Uh, and you've branched out from there. Right. Uh, Coochie's, The Plank, and, uh, and Taste. Um, what's your take on the, uh, the way the, uh, the, the village has developed? Specifically, remember the fights over the last 20 years over Amica, over the shores, and um, some of the uh, representations that were given to the community were that when you get more people into the downtown uh, with spending power, discretionary spending power, like at the shores, or at, hopefully at Amica, which is open now, right? It's beautiful. Right. The, the, uh, you know, the battle was, oh, nothing should happen, something should happen, and, and you know, compromises in both cases are what happened. Um, your, your plank is um, a pretty amazing place, and it's down there next to the shores. Would it even be there if it weren't for the shores? Oh, it definitely would be there. Um, I know, you know, the, the, the Shores is a unique spot, and, and, and we certainly get a lot of comments about how much that's helping our business. But I also am down there daily, and at night you can see that there's nobody there on the Shores. I think that a lot of the people have gone to Florida for the, for the winter, get away from the cold weather. So I think it, we would certainly still be there. Uh, I think it's helped a lot in the sense of um, bringing more people, and they're bringing friends and family into that, into that area to see what's going on and, and visiting our restaurants. So we've actually just increased the space of Plank uh, from, a, from a smaller footprint to a larger footprint, taking over the unit next door to, to keep up with that, uh, that growth. And, and as an economist, what, what I take from that is uh, a, a less so, like a restaurant's a very social activity. It's a social right. business. You, you're, you're, it's where people gather to, to socialize. And if those other things that had been where you are had been more successful, you wouldn't be there because you wouldn't be able to, right? So it's interesting to me that uh, there's a demand for a more social, a highly, you know, a socializing business there. And I take it that the increase in the number of people generally has been helpful. Uh, I know when, when the plank started, uh, uh, 
place was full of people from the shores. Maybe they were mm -hmm. the starter group or something. Mm -hmm. And um, we're cer we, we certainly have a big draw. I, it, it isn't just the Bronte Village. We, we do have a big draw. We're drawing from Burlington, Milton, uh, Mississauga. We've got people that come as far as Toronto to, to, to our restaurant. So there's a good drawing card there. Um, so you draw, you draw me from all the way to the other side of town. Thank you very much, Mark. We appreciate that. There's, uh, I would say, just going back to your comment about the change over the last, uh, let's go back a decade. I mean, when we opened Coochie Restaurant, which is on Jones Street, uh, every restaurateur I knew and, and friends said, you will fail miserably with that restaurant in, in Bronte. There just isn't a market for it. And we went two years of not making a dime in that restaurant, and uh, then it just took off and, and now was just voted one of the top 100 restaurants in Canada. So. Uh, I think that there's nothing but room. I'm a sunny side of the street guy. I think there's nothing but room for, for more upside in Bronte. And I think that's going to take some density and growth, as Ann said. It's going to take us uh, bringing more people into the area. But I think a lot more people, once they come down to Bronte and see what it is, want to be in that area. So whatever we're going to do for growth, uh, whatever the town plan is, is going to be quickly gobbled up by people that are going to look for great, uh, great places to sp spend their uh, time and raise their families. So um, let's take a look at the map that sort of uh, that will help us shape our conversation here. Uh, maybe the viewers would benefit from seeing what what we're calling the Brownie Village downtown uh -huh. area, and uh, you can see the mall indicated there. And um, let me see here. You could, what what highlight? What geographic highlight points do you want to point out there, Anne? Uh, <coughs> first, I'd like to follow up on Doug's point of view. We're not saying we want high ri rises, but uh, I know the original f plan for the mall was approved at 14 stories on, a, on, a, on an end unit there at Bronte Road and Lakeshore. But we're just saying, you know, eight minimum, 10 would be great. Uh, uh, we currently have a, a streetscape that uh, we have a disproportionate number of services, professional services, many medical services. I mean, if we were marketing Bronte Village as the medical health and wellness capital of Oakville maybe or Southern Ontario, we'd probably be very, very successful. Maybe that's what. what uh, uh, well, what it, there, needs there's to there's an opportunity because we have a significant number of top quality practitioners in various modalities. I mean. And it's park free walk everywhere. But one of the challenges we have is our, our Main Street retail is being taken up by all of these businesses that are offices that are closed on weekends, that are bi Main Street business killers. Uh, we actually have, uh, I know of one of our owners who actually is refusing to rent Main Street, his Main Street buildings to retailers because he thinks they're not going to last, whereas a doctor's office or a clinic or something ha has a better chance. So he refuses. To, so our prime real estate is being gobbled up by services. And nothing against our fine businesses, but it is a big buzzkill on Main Street when you've got all of these businesses that close. And that presents long-term parking issues as well for the staff that are there. So uh, in terms of focusing on areas, I. Uh, I, we'd like to look at the gateways. The board has discussed this ad nauseum. And the gateway, the, the South Bronte Gateway, I'm calling it, would be opposite the plank. The lands currently, formerly known as the Greb Lands. That is a, that's a big window to the lake. That is an entryway into the, the beautiful area, the lakeside, the park, and the boardwalk. We really, really would like to, and we understand the situation, that it's privately owned, and to your earlier comment, you can't make people do things. You try to find ways to induce. And we are asking the town, to, to, and I know our councillors are, are well aware of this, to create a beautiful park and uh, or a, a, a facility there. I know there are limitations on facilities, but something to serve the boaters. A, a, a terrace, little park, maybe uh, t umbrella tables, and connect uh, to the pier. Walk all the way along the pier. So that's, that's one gateway. And the other one which is kind of a big idea and it, it, 
it's fraught with all kinds of challenges is, is the Metro Marine uh, lands because that's currently the town operated marina and that represents a huge footprint a window to the lake for Bronte and it's really those two spots are the last opportunities to really really beautify Bronte and connect bring more people down to the area and we've also discussed at length uh, building an, 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 a new, another outer harbor marina because we have a long waiting list for boats we do an infill, another outer harbor marina with facilities repairs and maybe a, a restaurant or food and beverage services out there. And the idea would be that you, you create a bridge from Bronte Road to the West Island. You take all the masted boats uh, uh, out to the outer harbor and you keep the, the power boats or lower, low, uh, low boats on the, in the inner harbor. And the idea would be to celebrate our heritage and have some kind of gallery and museum in interpretive uh, museum with artisans and musicians and food and beverage facility uh, in that area, which would really be a major tourist attraction. We're, we're a designated tourist area. I we, see. We are. So if we put up a list of the of a couple of the directions that Council's looking at for the, for the official plan review, uh, you'll see on it a mention of this gateway concept, but it's, it's actually focused on the uh, on the uh, east entrance to the to the village. Do you want to talk about that? James, do you want to put that up? Well, I know that uh, the East Street uh, engine develops is, is coming in there, so we... Okay. Not this, uh, we have a list of, um, there you go. So one of the things there is, uh, the, 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 I guess what I would say is the major directions that Council's looking at is maintaining the boundary that you've seen in the previous thing with the dotted line, expand bonusing permissions on Main Street to allow the Brawny area to get some of what the Kerr Street area has had, further emphasize the Eastern Gateway at East Street and Lakeshore, <coughs> and, uh, uh, and maybe develop some specific policy directions for Brawny Harbor. That sort of ties into what you were just talking about, Ann. So on number three, looking at the uh, uh, the Eastern Gateway, uh, what do you want to look, you know, that's that's sort of the, the access point that a lot of Oakville residents, when they visit Brawny, will come through. And so the planners are asking, and council's getting ready to consider uh, whether to agree to this. Uh, shouldn't we be focusing on how to welcome people at that end? Yes, we should. We should at, at both ends. Bronte, uh, the other area that we should be welcoming people is at Brawny Road and Lakeshore, but that's very tough currently with the way that, that the, the street is, is configured and, the, and that intersection. Yes, I'm all, we're all for improving the eastern gateway entrance as well. Sure. I know that uh, the Brawny BIA worked for many, many years to get signs up near the QEW to yes. point you to Brawny. Yes. Uh, I hope that's been beneficial. Yes, it has. We, uh, the, the businesses tell us, they, uh, when they ask their customers how they found, uh, found out about Bronte, um, because they haven't seen them before, um, many of them have said that the, the highway signs drew them down, and Sammy's chip wagon is one that seemed to, seemed to get a lot of people talking about the signs, and th there have been others that have mentioned that to us on surveys, so that's been good. Yeah. So Shelley, in, in, as a resident and a residential taxpayer, and you know, businesses are business taxpayers, and their tax rates may be 1.8 times our residential one, uh, so they're taxpayers too. Um, how do you, uh, as a resident, holding your wallet feel when you hear about uh, people wanting massive capital works, which are very expensive? I'm listening to a lot of the conversation, and, and you know what strikes me as um, as odd is that, to the large extent, when we're listening to our community. And what's being talked about even at an executive level, we're sharing a lot of common ideas because at the end of the day, we do know that revitalization needs to go forward. We need to spend the tax dollars wisely and we need to look at what actually makes sense for the area, not just in terms of businesses, but the community as a whole. Because essentially that becomes your, lo those are becoming your loyal supporters. People who are invested here to live and want to be a part of this wonderful area that we call Bronte in Ward 1. 
And I think we're we're having a lot of the same conversations. It's the same theme we've seen. Um, our members are talking to us about increased uh, access to the waterfront, and and being able to have more shopping and amenities that tie in and support and lend to that. But at the same time, understand revitalization goes forward, but not at the total cost of the charm of the village, uh, historical. Um, and the environmental and sustainable approach that we want to see. We're looking for, as well, increased uh, activity for pedestrians, for, for bikers, families to come down and enjoy the place. Almost it becomes, I think, in the same sense, and a destination point. Yes. Because if yes. it is, and you're coming down and you're doing stuff, in the area, you know, you're naturally going to spend more dollars. You're going to participate in that local thriving economy. And I think this is a good news story for us all. But it also gives us a place that we're proud to be a part of. And I think it's it's odd that we're not trying to create um, more of an, uh, an avenue for shared conversation because I think there are some common themes we're talking about. And it would be great to be have all the stakeholders coming together and let's kind of see what we what we like to see because we agree there's certain there's certain areas there's certain shopping and services that are you know a lot more accented than we we actually need but what do residents what would residents like to see more of in terms of convenience because it's as opposed to going elsewhere you can have it right in your community what can we have at accents um, being able to just be down there and be part of the waterfront as you say drive that connectivity to the Bronte Bluffs area and the the, the, the the access to the water as itself. Um, the bridge has been discussed at great length. Is that, is that the only option? But let's keep that conversation broad and let's come together with a shared approach. So we have about $50 million, just uh, calculating roughly in my mind, in the Brawny Heritage Waterfront Park there at the uh, foot of Brawny Road. And it's certainly meant to be an attractor for people. And it, our, should I understand the desire for other attractors to mean that it's not working? I think it's working to a certain extent, but we could probably do more in the marina area because this has come up as part of one of the, a little bit of the feedback we got on the uh, Oakville Masters Harbor plan to tie into possibly the Bronte Village Growth Review and see how we can increase this public access, how we can tie the two together, increase that pedestrian traffic, increase biker, uh, bikers lane, uh, biking lanes, just increase the vibrancy of the area that allows people they want to come down there, spend some time there, you know, go to the restaurants, go to shopping, and you know, become more part of the community. And I think at the end of the day, people are um, becoming more engaged. They want to become more part of the solution versus saying, well, you know, this hasn't worked. Let's start discussing what can work. Right. So. Um Doug, you're, you're, you're Mr. Sunnyside here. Right. Uh, <laughs> listening to uh, the ladies on both sides yes. of you, what's your take? Well, I think, again, I just think that there's so much opportunity. And Absolutely. I think that with uh, Ian Bronte as it sits, and I'm, I'm always reinvesting back into Bronte. That's uh, where my home is. That's where I want to be. I want my kids to grow up there, and I want to keep uh, jumping in as quickly as I can to do, um, to do more and more to help that community help our community uh, build and, get, and bring more uh, more services. We just opened up Taste Marketeria down there on the corner, which is a 4,500 square foot um, boutique food shop, and uh, and we're we're having great success already. Uh, just being open four months, we're seeing more and more of our locals coming in and trying out different things. Um, we started our chef series now, where we we've got uh, not only our chefs scheduled, but we've got other chefs from Oakville uh, scheduled to come in and do uh, tastings over uh, for 20 people. Those kind of things are bringing more people to the area. I think that, um, you know, Anne's point about uh, down on the waterfront to have something down there uh, and in our park, um, more of a food and beverage area that's down there open to the public uh, is, is a, a necessary uh, uh, draw card for us and, and for if 
if the number's $50 million invested into that park, uh, we want to show it off as much as possible and, and get more people down there. And that could be, I know that you talk about the Grubbs uh, property, and that's uh, privately held, but maybe the town would look at doing something else down there where they lease out that spot and put it up for tender to uh, a restaurateur, um, to do a summer uh, patio out there that's open around year-round for, for the public to come down and enjoy themselves. Yeah, the town, to be clear, um, enjoys a, a lovely uh, lakeside, marina-side restaurant mm -hmm. called The Compass. Yes. Uh, not to mention a competitor or anything. Did not even open last summer, though. Um, out there. Um, and uh, so you have to wonder, if it didn't open last summer, do we... You know, do we want to start another one in the park if the one there isn't working? Well, do we know why it's not working? Have we looked at that and have we just have we uh, decided what all the root causes are? Because I don't think it's just the answer. The, the answer here isn't going to be just about growth because with growth comes a lot of other issues. We're talking about increased traffic congestion and so on and so forth. So we have to be mindful of that. We also have to be mindful of um, is it. You know, is it a case of we change in the footprint, but are we changing what essentially is working and doing well? So we have, to, we have to acknowledge what is working, and we have to also acknowledge where we can come together and, you know, as you say, create opportunities for, for, for better. Um, but, but be mindful of what some what what we're trying to achieve because we have to be careful. You know, residents want to come down and they want safety. So when you're coming down with your families and you're coming down to the area, you want to be able to have safe pedestrian access. We've got seniors in in the uh, in the area, so we've got a, we've got quite a mixed demographic. We've got to think of the youth as well. We've got a lot of new families that have moved in. So I don't think this is going to be um, a solution that. That's, that's hinging on growth. I think it's a multi-point um, uh, solution, but it's a solution that's going to come from all of the stakeholders coming together and perhaps sharing ideas, sharing what hasn't worked, um, what we could potentially do better um, that can work, but be mindful of what some of those choices are. Um, we do have already, as it stands, speeding and traffic issues. How do we encourage the growth but not lend to that? How do we create more sustainable and green space, which is something that Oakville prides itself in, but at the same time encourage that vitality? So, you know, th I think this is a multifaceted approach and more importantly an engaged approach. And when we start dialogue, larger dialogue, we can dial into ideas and we can dial into this shared vision. And I think that's really going to start moving things forward in a, in a positive manner. Well, in fact, you've kind of summed up perfectly what the process that's uh, ahead of us with uh, council and the planning department will look like. Uh, it's a, a great effort to create more dialogue about all of those questions that, that you just mentioned to see do we need to change the permissions that sit in the official plan. The, uh, uh, the, the dialogue is going to be uh, extensive, I hope, all through the year. And uh, I hope to see you uh, actively involved in it. Uh, we do, at the end, have to make some choices, leave the rules the way they are, change the rules, uh, uh, encourage more, discourage, you know, whatever. Those are the decisions that uh, an official plan uh, embody. Uh, and ultimately, of course, uh, we are the, we individual residents of Oakville. We decide what will succeed and what will fail by where we choose to spend our money, and that's Absolutely. economics. That's that's society. Um, uh, I know that in uh, another part of town, we could wish to have those services in order to in order to try to capture their visitors for shopping around them. So um, uh, you might not want to throw that baby out with the bathwater too quickly. And, uh, and I want to thank each of you for joining me today and uh, talking about uh, uh, the future of Brawny and the official plan review. And uh, I hope that you'll join us next time on Oakville Matters.